you wouldn't believe it, but this is a 100% off-grid setup right here on this cart in front of me. I got this from bigbattery.com. They were willing to send this out. I'm gonna be installing this on my RV as my permanent dedicated RV setup. I've got a GrowWatt 3000 watt inverter and a Mustang 7,000 watt hour, 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery here. This battery is about 200 pounds. It is very, very heavy, which is one of the reasons why I've got it on this cart because I don't like carrying it around. A couple other things that they sent were this wall charger. So you can use that to top off the battery just using a normal NEMA 515P. That's this normal plug right here. And they've also sent me this bus bar. Now these batteries cannot be linked together in series because the series, the voltage goes up, but they can be linked in parallel. And this is that bus bar. This would allow me to attach more batteries should I choose to get more. And it comes with all the brackets and everything here. So I've got this 3000 watt inverter. I've already got my RV plug wired in. I've already got my batteries connected and I've already got my solar wires connected. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that so you see it from beginning to end. I simply removed the faceplate and put in the solar wires. Red goes to positive, black goes to negative. And then I'm gonna add my AC output. It's gonna go green, black, white in that order from left to right. You can see it's already done there. I'm gonna add the red cable to the positive bus bar and the black cable to the negative bus bar. It's really that simple. Anybody could do this. Now this can rest in here and this slides on right here. So hopefully that demonstration there makes it easy to follow. It is very simple. I don't have the AC input put into this, but I will likely eventually do that. But because this is a pretty much 100% off-grid system, I don't foresee the necessity of having to put the AC input into this just with how I've got it set up. That all being said, you guys probably know that I use a lot of power stations or solar generators. And those are really nice because you pull it out of the box, you plug in the RV into it, you turn on the power, and you're done. But they cost a lot more than doing DIY setups like this. And this DIY setup is mostly pretty much done for you. You're pretty much putting in wires into the inverter and then attaching the battery. I mean, it's almost done out of the box, but not completely done out of the box. But you can save a good chunk of money by doing this. And I wanna thank Big Battery for sending this out because this is gonna be a huge benefit to our RV. And you're gonna see the results for yourself and I'll be testing this over the winter as well as during the summer to see how well it performs. And if there's any issues, I'll do a follow-up video. But Big Battery has really good reviews. I trust them and they've been very upfront with me as far as all the equipment. So I'm excited to get this installed in the RV. The reality is, once I flip this on, I have a fully functioning system. The fans are allowed on this, so if it gets hot wherever you're putting this, you will likely hear the fans. It's just working to keep itself cool, and that's totally normal. So I've got this turned on. It says my battery voltage is at 51.8 volts. I'm gonna grab my voltmeter, turn it to volts AC power. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in right here. And you can see I'm getting 121.1 volts and 60 hertz. So this is putting out perfectly good energy for using in my RV. This is rated to 25 amps output at 120 volts. It is supposedly 90% efficient. And what that means is that you're gonna get 90% of the rated capacity of the battery out through the inverter because we're switching from DC power to AC power. You are going to have an efficiency loss. It does have all the protections as far as over voltage, over amperage, overheating, all of those DC shutoffs, everything like that. It looks like it's pre-built into here. The no load power consumption is less than 60 watts. So just to have this turned on is gonna be consuming anywhere from 50 to 60 watts. That means in a 10 hour period, it's gonna use about 500 watt hours of battery capacity. So you'll wanna factor that as you factor what size battery you need. Or if you're having me factor that, then that's one of the things I can factor for you. It says the max PV array is 4,000 watts input up to 18 amps. Startup voltage is 150 volts DC and max open circuit voltage is 250 volts DC. So basically what that means is I need to have my solar panels be between 150 volts VMP, that's maximum power voltage, and less than 250 volts VOC or volts open circuit, and then below 18 amps ideally. So those are the specs on this. I wanna go ahead and get this in the RV. I've got 2,100 watts of solar panels up on the roof. I've got one of them not working right now. So I've only got 18 that are working in total because I've got seven groups of three. And I may have to rewire that just so I can get the voltage properly set on here. So in total, we're dealing with about 230, 240 pounds, something like that. So the idea is I'm going to slide it in from the side here. I'm going to use this cardboard because it has less friction because I want it to end up over there is my official landing spot. Well, it worked out pretty well. 
I first took my RV off grid or like boondockable, whatever you want to call it, over two years ago. And we've never once needed shore power, which is pretty awesome. But there's actually a brand new way of putting solar panels on the roof, which far exceeds what I could have done. It's much, much better. If you're interested in that, I'll have other videos out or email me. Okay, so I've got it into position where I want it for now. I could slide it over just a little bit more. You're supposed to have about 12 inches of clearance all the way around it. And I have vents here on this side and up here. So right here, and this vent is gonna be hitting against that wall. And this is really easy. My battery cables are already done. I'll route them right there. I got my solar cable here and then my shore power cable. Okay, so that is in. So now we're ready to turn on. Initial startup. All right, just like that, we have power. So I'm now powering the entire RV. Just heard the microwave kick on. So showing we're 120 volts and 0.4 to 0.5% of the load. So the way that you read that is you have a 3000 watt output, 1% would be 30 watts. So here at 0.5% is basically a 15 watt load. Now it is well, six o'clock at night and this whole thing from beginning to end took me like less than an hour. Actually filming took more time than the actual work of putting this in. The reason I'm going with it flat mounted like this is simply because I don't have enough height here under the bed and I don't want to mount this in any other location. I don't think it's going to be a problem. So overall, big battery did this right. This uh, is heavy, but really freaking awesome. As you can see, it's a very clear sunny day. No clouds in the sky at all. You can see my solar panels up there. I've got 21 of them. It's my new duck house right there that I've got 600 watts of solar panels on. Video upcoming on that. In this exact moment, I am running my Mr. Cool mini split on heat. So I am heating up the inside of the RV right now on the big battery system. The Mustang system is running it without any problems at all. It's currently using a lot of power because it's so cold out right now, but as it warms up in here, it will gradually reduce how much power it needs. So of the 21 solar panels that are on the roof, they're all 100 watts. Because I have to be below 250 volts VOC and above 150 volts BMP, I can only get 1200 of them connected in one string. So the other 900 watts that I don't have connected, I'll put in a parallel connection, so that way I increase the amperage. But for right now, I'm just gonna do the 1200. And so I've got it all run on this cable right here. To check my voltage, I'm gonna use my voltmeter. You always wanna check this before you make a connection. So I need to be below 250. All right, so I'm at 234 right now. And once I connect these, the VMP or the voltage that's going in is going to change. And basically it just changes because now you're adding amps and so forth. So very simply, since we've checked everything, I'm gonna go black to black right here, red to red. It immediately recognizes solar power going in. So here it says it's got 173 volts going in. It's outputting 120. The load is 42% and the battery's at 47.5 volts. So from solar, I'm only getting 350 watts right now, which is okay because it is a little bit later in the day and some of the solar panels are already shaded because of the roof. So that's probably why that's so low. We're getting 2.2 amps at 158 volts. So all you have to do is do 158 times 2.2 and that's where you're gonna get about 350 watts. So that's just because of the shading. So overall, I think the Mustang and this GrowWatt are a perfect pair. I don't see why it would be a bad option. It's very affordable for everything you get. And you could just stack multiple batteries here. And it doesn't have to be up front in the RV. They can be anywhere in the RV. You basically just need to be able to get your shore power plug all the way to the inverter or add your own RV cable that can reach the shore power plug. The only thing that I would change is that I would like to get a remote screen that I can put up on the wall so that way I can see what's going on without having to lift up the bed. That would definitely make a difference, as well as being able to see an accurate state of charge on the bigbattery.com Mustang battery. I can get a lot of that info on the screen as I cycle through it. Now, if you've had this battery and this setup for a while, when whether it's good or bad, I want you to comment down below so other people can get some other information about it. I don't have any issues with it, and it's a very simple system to put together. I mean, literally from beginning to end is less than an hour. So for me, one of the coolest parts about this whole system is because it's permanently in here and I'm not using just a backup power station, I can just leave the solar panels connected all the time. I can even leave the air conditioner and heater just on an auto mode 
keep it at like 60 degrees or something like that to make sure everything stays neutrally ambiently warm in here. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes as I continue to do more tests. But especially from a preparedness standpoint, being able to just back up and know that power wise, I'm 100% ready to go and just throw it on the hitch and go is really cool. It saves me a lot of time from having to load up a power station and then get on the road. So as far as bugging out and being able to get to a safer location or just the convenience of camping with my family, it's already done. I don't have to worry about anything and it just runs on its own. So that's what I love most about this setup right here. You can reach out to me at info at poweredportablesolar.com and I'd be happy to help organize that, piece it together for you. Or as well, if you just wanna to go to bigbattery.com, I'll have the links down below so that way you can see exactly what we've got here and make it easier for you to follow. Thanks guys, be prepared. See y'all in the next video.